good thing about that fact is uh, that you already use the German accent. And at least I'm living in Monaco, so I'm not completely as German as others might be. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to be here. My name is Titus Gebel. I am a lawyer by education who eventually became entrepreneur. I founded, amongst other things, Deutsche Rohstoff AG, a German mining and oil and gas company uh, listed at Frankfurt Stock Exchange. And I must say that was the best time of my life because you can imagine as a lawyer for the first time in my life I produced something of real value. <laughs> uh, oil, gas, gold, silver, tungsten, molybdenum and some other minor metals, which is, uh, is really um, is a good feeling that you have really contributed to the wealth of the world with real products. Uh, we were relatively successful and so I could retire at the end of 2014 and move um, to Monaco with my family and focus on my, which is now my lifetime project that's called Free Private Cities. What is a free private city? Let me start with a quote from a guy whose name you probably have heard of, it's Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Intellectuals and governments especially claim that uh, they are basically following the idea of Jean-Jacques Rousseau that we have a social contract. What they do not tell you is what I will quote now. From where have 100 the right who want a ruler to vote for the 10 who don't? Even majority rule is subject to prior agreement and requires initial unanimous consent. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Social Contract, page 16. They never tell you, but every single constitution is a violation of this principle because they are a contract at the expense of third parties, something that is forbidden in all civil and common law systems for a reason. Now, imagine a private company offers you the basic services of a state that is protection of life, liberty and property in a defined territory. You pay a certain amount for those services per year. Your respective rights and duties are laid down in a written citizen contract, a real contract, between you and the provider. For everything else, you do as you please. Thus, you are a contracting party on an equal footing with a secured legal position instead of subject to the government's or majority's ever-changing will. And the best thing is, you only become part of it if you like the offer. So for the, if this was true, for the first time in history, Jean-Jacques Rousseau's requirement of initial consent would be fulfilled because every single citizen had signed the contract. So, if you organize this in a form of a, of a basically um, private company for profit, then the incentives are completely different from states too. The operator has skin in the game and is liable. So he has to treat his customers well like any other service provider who wants to be successful. He wants to make money and there's no hypocrisy around the common good or saving the world. I invite you to regard, to, to come away from the traditional idea that many of us have that the, here are the markets and there's politics and government. No, it's a market. It's one big market. And it's call, I call it the market of living together. This is the biggest and most important market of all. And if we come into this market with a new product, then we will see that basically all political systems are products. And if we can choose amongst a diversity of products, we normally over time would choose what fits us best, what we like best, and then you probably find out that we are not the same. Some might prefer more anarcho-capitalist systems, others might prefer more regulated systems. And others might, third parties might uh, favor religious rule system or other people 
say we want to have uh, certain cultural or ethnical um, uh, similarities with the people I'm living with. Um, all this would be okay. Even communism would be okay as long as participation is voluntarily, right? And in so far, of course, there will be then a, pro a filter process. Some, some will not work over time, some will work. But why should it be different from the product markets and the service markets where we have a variety of products? There's no one product, one size fits all. Why should this be different in our market of living together? Now, I think that my concept of free private cities would have a lot of competitive advantages in, in the market. Um, let me elaborate a little bit on that. First, there's legal certainty. Every resident has a, written con has a signed agreement with the operator of the free private city. This uh, written contract clearly defines the respective rights and obligations of the contracting parties and is enforceable by every resident. The operator cannot change this agreement unilaterally. Conflicts about its interpretation or fulfillment go to independent arbitration. Now you might say, yeah, but he has maybe the, the police and he can just ignore this arbitration. This is true, but um, then he will lose his customers and not be able to gain new customers, right? I, uh, on a cruise ship, the captain in theory, has the same power. He is an absolute monarch. Have you ever heard that the cruise ship captain ordered passengers to be flocked because they weren't well dressed at the captain's dinner? No, he haven't, because he has a commercial interest not to do that. And exactly this is the incentive for me to treat my people well, because they're my customers. And if I tr mistreat them because I could so, because I have the power, then this would this news would go around quickly and my expansion planes would be over and people would leave. By the way, this is the situation of Monaco. Um, the prince in uh, theory has a lot of power. He could do not everything he wants. It's still a constitutional monarchy, but he could come up with all idiotic laws and, and, and rules. But he does not because he know that we would then leave immediately, right? So it's, it's the combination of competition and having a relatively small territory compared to, I mean, if you have to leave your continent to go to another system or another product, it's much more difficult. If you are in a small entity, that works, that the competition works as, as a limiting um, factor for power. And that has, uh, uh, could, uh, could uh, be established for now about, I think, the system in Monaco that is uh, since 150 years, um, it's working. Um, second uh, advantage of my model, there might be other models, um, is guaranteed security. Uh, since you are paying for the protection of your life, liberty and property, and only for that, you have a corresponding claim against the operator. The first and foremost task of the police or the security, the private security uh, engaged by me, is therefore to provide for your security around the clock. If you become victim, of a crime, you are uh, entitled to compensation. That should be a normal thing, right? I'm paying for security, it is broken into my apartment, I go to the operator and say, that shouldn't have happened, I want uh, damages. Because he is offering a service. And if the service is not good, then you have a, have a claim. Then you are entitled to compensation. So the police has uh, to follow predefined and known rules of engagement, which would be part of the contract and cannot be changed as well. Of course, there would be much more freedom, apart from the security package and respective payments that comes with the contract, and you cannot outvote that. You can decide by yourself for what goods and services you want to spend money on and which charities and political cases you want to support. You have full freedom of action, limited only by the respective rights of others and the basic rules laid down in agreement with the operator. This includes, for example, free speech, full freedom of contract, including the negative freedom of rejecting people, and the freedom of, of association with your fellow residents. The interaction between the residents happens on a purely voluntary basis, not based on coercion. Fourth advantage, limitless innovation. Innovation is seen as chance, not as risk. Provided you do not harm your neighbors or their property, anyone can introduce new products and services without permission or license and pay for them in any currency desired. 
you decide on your own if you want to test or use those products or services. After a while, free private cities will offer much higher quality of life to everyone. And the last, but I think my favorite point is getting rid of politics. There is no more need to argue and to find political compromises between ideas which are incompatible. Instead, specialized cities catering to specific ideological, cultural or ethnical concerns are conceivable. Everybody can go into the system that best matches his or her convictions and personality. Given voluntary participation, everything is possible. This simple rule has the potential to disarm and transform even the totalitarian ideology into just one product among many. So, this is the theory. And Professor Hopper has, and rightly so, um, told me, well, that's fine, but we want to know how this can be realized in the real world. And this is an absolutely justified question, and um, when I started this about two years ago, I was giving myself five to ten years to make it happen. Um, it seems so that it's happening much faster than I expected. Um, I can't give you any details at the moment um, because we are still in a, in a hot phase of a negotiation with the government. But I mean, there's a good chance that within the next 12 months there will be the first project up and running. So if you are interested, um, you, you can uh, have a look at the website. It's called freeprivatecities.com, one word. And there's a newsletter and, uh, and you can subscribe. So you will be informed if there is uh, something happening. But how, how would be a strategy to approach governance? Because after all, there is no unclaimed territory in, in the world. You know that there are some people saying, no, there are small pockets of terra nullius. That's the name of the concept. Um, the problem with the terra nullius concept is that a land is only unclaimed by its neighboring states unless they decide otherwise. And that, for example, happened to Liberland with Croatia. That happened to, uh, don't know what, what the name of the pro uh, project was, uh, before the coast of Australia, with Tonga, which eventually claimed then the new creative. They even made an artificial island, which was then claimed by Tonga. So, Realistically, we have to negotiate with countries. We have to uh, convince them that this is a good idea to establish something like that. Now, wh why should they do that? Well, there's only one reason. Because they are expecting advantages for themselves. That's the only possibility, right? And in so far, I'm not going to government saying, uh, by the way, we want to uh, establish a free private city because it's a disruptive technology to kick out basically government and, and, and states. Well, if you, if you approach governments like that, the probability that they will listen to you is relatively limited, right? So what you do instead is you are looking for already existing uh, things that are considered not threatening. And in our case, that's easy. It's a special economic zone. There are already 4,000 special economic zones existing in the world. And what we do is we say, well, it's a special economic zone next level, a special economic zone plus. And now it's getting even better. I say, and there is even precedence for that. It is called the Dubai International Financial Center. They even have own legal system. They implemented British common law based own legal system. They hired a retired judge from London. So they have a system within a system. It's already there. The other thing you all know is uh, basically the relationship between Hong Kong and China. That is, Hong Kong is part of China, part of the Chinese sovereignty, but still has its own rules, its own system. It's a special historical situation that is clear. But just to make it uh, better understand, and it's always better if you can refer to existing entities, to existing situations, to make people feeling more comfortable. And in so far, we would not need full serenity to make this happen. You would basically, um, being a little bit in the position of Hungary, where we would say, okay, serenity, foreign policy, and the army is your part, but we do all the rest. What we need is the 
um, the possibility to, to uh, regulate uh, ourselves. And of course, this is no easy task because it is giving up power to a certain degree. So why should, why should uh, again, why should a, a country do that? Um, in my original mod model, everybody is coming um, voluntarily, so you have to start on an uninhabited territory. So this is, on the other hand, a plus, because if you tell them, well, look, um, look at, at entities like Singapore, Hong Kong, or Monaco. Around those, there's a big belt of wealth which is in your country, and they will be pay taxes to you. And so if we now create something in a formerly uninhabited area, this is a big win for everybody, right? You, we will create investment, we will create jobs. A lot of people will, we will create um, uh, uh, work for your, for your companies in, in your country would uh, certainly um, uh, take uh, some of their services. And many people will just uh, commute in and out and they will all pay taxes to you. So, especially countries that, have, that are running out of money and out of ideas are our main targets. We would say, okay, look, in, in uh, places like Central America, I would say, look, p investment is not coming because your system uh, is considered, we don't know if it's true, but it's considered by the investment community as corrupt. And um, people want stability, especially if they want to invest. And People do not understand your, your legal system, which, by the way, is changing every year. So if we now establish a well-known civil legal system, be it British common law or German or Swiss civil law, that is well-known to the world, and, and companies can invest according to that rule, and we would even import um, uh, judges from those first world countries, which we have screened that are completely reliable, then it becomes interesting to those companies which otherwise wouldn't come. So that makes sense even for a dictator, right? He will probably understand that. And now if you, if you imagine you are a student which is just coming out of a new university and has a, has a great idea around free private cities, the probability that the president will listen to you is very small. But if you are coming with people who have all a track record, who are investors, you have collected maybe network investors that is coming with a certain amount of money. I mean, I've experienced that already. The, the first question is how much, how much are you investing? So it's all about money as usual, right? So I would line up um, a group of people, that was my original strategy was first write the book so that, in, that should be finished by, by the end of October um, and then hopefully published this year so that if I fail, others can just pick up from there and, and continue. Um, my idea is, my thesis is, once the idea is in the world and you have given some idea, uh, hints how to implement that in reality, it will eventually happen. Uh, and, and, and I'm giving myself the rest of my life to make it happen. Persistency is absolutely important. Um, and then so far, the next step would be uh, line up advisors with big names that are creating trusts, even to governments, and the third step would be then line up investors and only then you approach governments. So now this is happening quicker because I have been approached by another group uh, with, they wanted me to support them because they are in a, in a legally advantageous position to make such, uh, I would say, which might become a 70% free private city uh, happening very soon. So my plans have been um, disturbed a little bit, but to the better, uh, you could say. Um, I, don't, I think uh, the, the field marshal on Moltke once said, um, every plan is uh, uh, in ruins with the first contact with the enemy. And that's how it is, right? And um, you have to be flexible. And this is another uh, uh, advice I would give to everybody who's, who wants to get involved in that business. You have to make concessions, right? If the country says we want that 60% or whatever percentage of workers is coming from our country, well then, if you're not accepting that, you are out, right? You can always say, well, but we couldn't find qualified workers in, in so far. Uh, th these are two things. One is the rule and the other is the implementation of the rule and then you have the control of the implementation. And at the end of the process, the result might be completely different from what the original idea was. So there's a lot of um, room, even if you have to make uh, large concessions. Monaco, for example, 
uh, had a big problem in the 60s with France and de Gaulle tried to squeeze them out because they said, you are basically a protectorate. From now on, I want every Monaco citizen to pay taxes to France because all their rich people just moved to Monaco, right? And they kept their factories in France. So what did they do? Eventually, Monaco negotiated and uh, the, the compromise is that French people living in Monaco after 62, after the 1962, um, they have to pay taxes to France. And this is remaining until today. So, but everybody who's not French still enjoys uh, uh, the tax system of Monaco. So this is the real world, right? Real world is never black white. It's, it's always a little bit of a, of a deal and, 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 and a trade off. Okay, and, and then you can try to solve their problems. There has um, uh, popped up this uh, micro migration crisis. You can say, well, look, we would create a migrant city in, and, and you, we need your protection. Uh, you guarantee this as a Western country that we have military protection by NATO. And we are setting up a, as a private company a migrant city. We are selecting our migrants, but we could off then set this up in Libya or wherever and ease the migration pressure. Because we would basically there establish cities which are stable and you have to be probably relatively robust, will, will be rather, rather uh, a Singapore type of, of government than uh, uh, th that what we would do amongst ourselves, which is much more liberal. But I mean, depending on, on your target group, right? But this could be a Trojan horse of liberty. Because if people see that this is working without politics, they will draw their conclusions. And then you are solving their problems, right? So that is basically, this, these are my answers to, to the justified question, how do you make this happen in practice? Again, we are relatively close. Other groups are also relatively cl uh, close to, to making something like that happen. We have one project in Myanmar and one in French Polynesia. Um, and eventually it will happen because it's just a better product, that is <laughs> at least my conviction. And, and let's face reality, I mean, a political party or a political movement which is based on liberty and free markets uh, as main principles uh, will never ever, in my view, gain a majority in, in a mass democracy where everybody has a vote. Uh, because you are competing against political parties who claim that you have the right to live on the expense of others, that you are not responsible for your failures, but society is, and that you're morally superior to the free market people. Attractive offer, right? It's what can I say as a libertarian candidate? Vote for me, I promise I will do nothing for you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you are applauding, but the majority will not, right? So, and that is the reason why you have to go just another way. Say, okay, let's skip that way. I tried it for 30 years. And I can do now, continue for 30 more years, expecting a different result. Or I could do something completely new, and that is a new product, a niche product, right? Ludwig von Mises has, has discovered as early as 1922 in his book, Die Gemeinwirtschaft, that socialism and communism can't work because of they have no free prices, so they have no indicator of scarcity. What were the consequences of this discovery? Zero, zero were consequences, right? Because we have now in Venezuela was the 85th attempt to make socialism happen. All failed, of course. And the 86th attempt is only a question of time. Because the, what I said is so attractive. People, uh, uh, you get something for free versus you have to work for it. I take this. Every, we all would take this, right? So we have to create a different product and imagine or, or, or re recall the iPhone. That was invented exactly 10 years ago. If I had told you 12 years ago, well, what about a handhold computer and you can make phone calls with it. You would have said, do I need that? Well, nice to have, <coughs> right? But once it was there and everybody could see it and touch it and, and test it, wow, within two or three years, the whole world, all big producers were only producing smartphones. And this is basically the idea. It probably will not take much longer time, but the, this is the idea. Don't convince people of something, you just do it and show it. And then people can come, can have a look. Okay, is it working? Oh, 
everybody has a contract and they go back to their government, I want a contract too. And so you can change the world. It takes a while, <laughs> admittedly, but I think the time for analyzing and arguing is over. I mean, there, there are a few things, the, the ones of you that have been here for, for 10 times or more, probably there wasn't much new things there because you already have heard it. And of course you can spread the news to the rest of the world, but at the end it will not convince them as Ludwig von Mises couldn't convince them. And at the end you will have to do something and you will have to show that there is an alternative possible, which is not socialism, right? And I think that the, the, we never had better chance to make this happen. We have, other than the failed attempts in the 60s and 70s, we have now understood that we can't do something against the state, but we have to agree with the state to make an agreement um, that is uh, giving us the possibility to do that. So if you are interested uh, in, in that subject, uh, again, check out uh, uh, the website, freeprivatecities.com. Um, you can also approach me. I have to leave um, tomorrow morning, but I'm still here around the whole day. So if you, if you think you know a place where this could happen, if you uh, have an idea or a government you know or whatever, or just interested becoming a resident or a business uh, owner in our upcoming project, which hopefully will happen in the next six months, then um, talk to me. I'm happy to uh, welcome you then in the first free private city soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>